and welcome back to another video. I'm Becca and today I'm going to be giving my review for the game The Quarry, which is the newest installment by the development team Supermassive, who in my opinion are probably most well known for their game Until Dawn and also the Dark Pictures Anthology. Until Dawn is one of my favorite games, although I do play a lot of cozier games. I do sprinkle in some horror from time to time and I've been playing Until Dawn since it first came out. I've played it probably well over 10 times. I love that game with my whole heart and I will pretty much get any game that this development team puts out. We've been making our way through the Dark Pictures Anthology on stream and so of course when I heard that the quarry was going to be coming out which is basically the spiritual successor for Until Dawn, I knew that it was going to be an instant buy. This is going to be a spoiler free review you talking about my thoughts on the game after one playthrough. I feel like the ending that we got was a pretty decent ending. Most of the people survived so I can speak on my experience even though we didn't get all of the clues or all of the information that we could have gotten in the game. I still feel like I can give some of my thoughts and opinions on this first playthrough with the intention of going back and getting more of the evidence and all of the different endings at a later date. The quarry takes place at Hackett's Quarry Summer Camp. It's the end of the summer camp season and as the game opens, we see the camp counselor group saying goodbye as a school bus drives off with all of the campers. We start out as the camp counselors are gathering their belongings and preparing to go home, but of course, a wrench is thrown in their plan or in their van more appropriately because their van breaks down and they're forced to stay one more night much to the dismay of the runner of the camp Christopher Hackett who is very concerned that the group of kids are going to have to stay another night. He seems like he's trying to rush them out as quickly as possible and as he drives off to get help he tells them to make sure they stay in the lodge, lock the doors and don't let anyone in and nobody go out. But of course a group of teenagers do the exact opposite and decide to plan a party in the middle of the woods as a final hurrah before leaving summer camp. What they were not expecting was to be pursued by a group of monsters, both human and paranormal, because the woods around Hackett's Quarry hold a lot of secrets that this group of counselors are going to uncover as the night goes on. Will the counselors make it through the night? Your choice in the game will decide their fate. So jumping right into my thoughts, I have this review broken down into a lot of different aspects of the game. So like I said, I have only given this game one playthrough, so I don't know all of the possible endings, so just be gentle with me on that. I do intend to replay the game in the future to find all of the clues and get all of the evidence and hopefully the story pieces together a little bit more than what we had but I do feel like for a first playthrough we did pretty well. Only four of the camp counselors died and two of those were very late in the game so for the most part we kept almost everyone alive. We did what the game was wanting us to do I think and we got a pretty decent ending. So let's start out with talking about the way that I play the game. I mentioned that I play the game on PC, I played it through Steam. All of the other super massive games that I've played have been on my PS4. That's how I've played Until Dawn and the Dark Pictures Anthology games. But for this one, I wanted to change it up a little bit for a few reasons. One, because I have a lot of PC games and so I figured that it would be a better way to be able to play it and stream it without having to worry about hooking up my PS4 because those really are the only games that, that I use my PS4 to play. So I'm not very well versed with PlayStation. I'm more of a PC and Nintendo gamer. So when it comes to mechanics like quick time events, those typically don't go very well when I'm playing on my PlayStation because I'm not as familiar with the buttons. So I wanted to to take this opportunity to switch it up a little bit and overall I 
thought that my experience with QuickTime events and just button knowledge was a lot smoother playing on my PC than it would have been on my PS4. And that's just because I'm more familiar with my keyboard and my mouse and things like that and I'm not as familiar with the PS4 controller. However, there were a lot of issues with the game on PC and from what we could find it was not as buggy on the PlayStation. So if that is something that you are worried about I would probably suggest getting it on the PlayStation rather than getting it on PC because even the first day that we got it there was so much lag that I couldn't even play it. We fixed the lag, came back, there were still more bugs and the lag came back. We fixed some more things and still throughout the course of the game, even though there was no more lag, there were a lot of bugs that I think affected my gameplay. And from what I heard from other people, they were not experiencing the same things on PS4. Some of the lag that I was experiencing was extremely long loading screens to the point where we thought the game might be broken. Um, the cutscenes would start with no sound and then all of a sudden catch up and so everything would be off for a couple of minutes. Buttons weren't working the way they were supposed to and it was just making it very difficult to do all of those quick time events and make the choices that I needed to make when the game was lagging and just glitching so badly. When it loads into the next scene it's gonna skip. It'll freeze after a couple seconds the sound cuts out. We're gonna miss all of this. Oh God! Ma'am? <laughs> I was hoping you'd come back to me. Let's see what you found. Is she okay? And like I said, I had friends coming into my streams while we were playing and saying that they had played it on the PlayStation and they were not having the same problems that we were having. So I do think that that is most likely because it's a bit of a hefty game and I don't have a ton of space on my PC. So I'm wondering if that contributed to it at all. Like I said, we seemed to fix a lot of the lag problems, but there were still a lot of bugs, even after updating the game and doing all of the fixes that we found online. Welcome back to another cutscene. Okay. So... Never mind. We're good. Sure they're getting they're shorter! Sure they're all ready to go. For real this time. Even through all the lag and the bugs, we were kind of memeing on it and playing it off like it was part of the game. It became a joke and it was just something silly that was happening. And it was kind of funny to imagine it happening like truly in the game. It was, it was a good time. We, we had a lot of fun with it. Max, can we just look? Max, can we just look around before we jump to conclusions? Did you actually even oh. talk to Mr. Hackett, or did you just leave a message? Well, what's the difference? This, this is. Did you actually even talk to Mr. Hackett, or did oh. you just leave a message? Well, what's the difference? This, this is the difference. Well, what's the difference? This, this is the difference. <laughs> oh no! Hello? I guess he doesn't check his voice. How was I supposed to know? Oh no! Oh no! I mean. And like I said before, even though we had all of the bugs, I still think that I enjoyed my experience playing on PC because of those quick time events. They are such a big part of the game that and being able to aim and since I don't typically play a lot of games that have quick times or um, aiming, I don't, I don't play a lot of shooters or things like that. So I know for a fact that I did way better on PC than I would have done on PS4. I got it. Even with lag. You quick time events got nothing on me. Not on PC. 
So like I said, overall, I would probably recommend getting it on the PlayStation if you can, but if you are not as familiar with those buttons, you kind of have to weigh what you prefer. Do you mind having some bugs in the game and having to work around that sort of thing in order to be able to possibly play the game better with having more familiarity over mouse and keyboard or would you rather have a lag free experience and possibly not have as many people survive if you don't have the familiarity of the PlayStation 4 controller. Moving on to the graphics, the graphics in this game were absolutely stunning. At the beginning of the game, you get to see some shots of the lake and just the woods and the surrounding camp, and it was gorgeous. There were a couple times when the characters would be hiking and they stopped on an overlook to see the lake, and it was just the sprawling landscape. It was so beautiful. So I really enjoyed that aspect of it a lot. And the quarry has a really cool aesthetic where it blends modern. All of the characters have cell phones and listen to podcasts and all that jazz with more retro because a lot of the aesthetic of the game is kind of old school, almost like um, B list, C list movies VHS tapes. One of the mechanics of the Supermassive games is that you can kind of see the different path that your characters have taken and cause and effect throughout the course of the game and that was presented to you. Each path was presented in sort of an old school VHS horror movie cover, which I thought was very clever. And then cycling through the different path options, it was laid out like you were combing through a VHS tape. For some reason, we could not get the mechanic of going through the different path to see the cause and effects to work. I tried a variety of different buttons. I didn't look it up, so I will say that, but it wasn't very intuitive to kind of work through the path. And I would have liked to go back and check every time a path was updated to see kind of what was going on in each character's story so far and unfortunately we weren't able to do that so i'm hoping that in future playthroughs we'll be able to figure that out so we can keep kind of a closer look at each character's story as the game progresses. So that kind of moves us into the mechanics of the game. If you are unfamiliar with this style of game, you haven't played Until Dawn, you've not played the Dark Pictures Anthology games, They this development team does a really cool thing where it's almost like a butterfly effect style gaming, where the choices you make in the game affect the outcome of the game. And it can be as little as picking up a bracelet. It can be as big as choosing left or right, choosing to hide or run, you know, choosing, and sometimes you don't have to choose anything. That is the one thing that the game kind of started stressing as more came out is maybe don't do anything and see what happens. And so it just opens up a world of so many different possibilities and different outcomes which increases the playability. I know like I said I've gone back and replayed Until Dawn and I've never gotten a perfect game. I've never gotten all the clues. I've never I might have gotten it where everyone lives but I've never 100% of the game and I've never gotten it where any where everyone dies. So I'm currently still even years later working through all the different possible outcomes of that game and then we are going to slowly work through the possibilities in all of the other games, the quarry included. So I think in that regard, the butterfly effect mechanic is one of those genius game mechanics that you could possibly have because it increases the playability and it makes you feel a lot more connected to the game as you're playing because the choices that you're making really do affect what is happening to the characters and 
Um, one of the things that I didn't like as much for the quarry, but I think that it was probably a good move, is that some of these choices were very vague. There were mechanics, like I said, they're quick time events. So with the mouse, you had to move it different directions. And if you missed, maybe the character would trip or maybe the character would get munched by whatever was chasing them. But there was also a mechanic where you had to button mash. Uh, for me, it was I had to button mash the W key. But I know on controller, it would have you mash like the X button or something like that, whatever. You don't really know like what the outcome is going to be when you're doing that. It's just what the game wants you to do. And so it was what I was doing. And I will say if I could go back and not do that, for a couple of them, I definitely would. So there were times when I was sitting there just punching the wall, being like, I wish I would have known that that was gonna be the outcome. I wish that it would have given me a little bit more information. And that could have been because I didn't have all the clues or that could just be the game just being vague, just to be vague because that's, what makes things more fun, more frustrating, but definitely more fun. Along with all of that, obviously I mentioned that you're picking up clues along the way and all of the different games have like a different object that you have to kind of collect to see into the future to kind of help you with your choices, the different ways that uh, the game could play out. And until dawn, there was a lot of indigenous lore. So you were collecting pieces of totem poles. In the quarry, you were trying to collect tarot cards. So then at the end of every chapter, you go and a character tells you about the tarot cards that you collected, if you collected any, and then you have the opportunity to choose only one of the tarot cards to see the possible future. Whereas in Until Dawn, you're collecting pieces of several different totem poles. And so you got to, as long as you collected all of the pieces for all the totem poles, you could kind of see how things play out in a more well-rounded way. With the tarot cards, you can only choose one. So you're kind of picking and choosing, okay, what, what area do I think that I want to explore a little bit more with the description that the tarot card is giving? And I thought that that was really unique. I actually enjoyed that a lot. And finding the tarot cards was not too, too difficult. I would say uh, there were definitely ones that we missed, but it was in chunks of the game where, again, we were experiencing a lot of technical difficulties and lag and things like that. So we weren't exploring quite as much as we probably should have been. And that's why we missed a lot of the clues. But in the future, I would love to go back and get all the tarot cards. And then I would probably have to replay several different times to explore and see all of the different cards and what outcome they are showing which just loops back to that replayability I want to know when I click on this card it's gonna show me this but what about this card when I click on that what is it gonna show me and there's 22 different tarot cards so if you're getting four per chapter or a couple per chapter and you can only choose one see where I'm going with that. The one thing I will say though is that along with getting the, the tarot cards you're also collecting clues around the summer camp and in the houses that and buildings that you go into. They are supposed to give you a more well-rounded story, help you piece together the information, and I did not love the way that the clues were handled in this game. So in other supermassive games, you pick up a clue, you can press a button, you can turn it all around, you can press another button if it's a document and it shows text along the side of the screen, and you can go back and revisit that clue in game but also pop open your settings menu and revisit the clues in your settings in the quarry you don't have that option and sometimes you don't even see the clues fully when you're picking them up there were a couple clues where it was very text heavy and i wanted to go back and read it when i opened my settings it was just a vague description of the item itself like 
A piece of paper with handwriting scrawled on it found in a drawer. Yes, of course, but what did it say? And then I just, I don't know what it says. I didn't know what it, what it said. There was one clue in particular. If we hadn't, I mean, we found it obviously, but if we hadn't watched the credits, we never would have found out what the clue even said because it was there and it was gone in a split second. So that was one of the things that I was kind of harping on a lot during the playthrough is I don't even know what clues, I don't know what I'm picking up and I don't truly understand the significance in, of any of these items because what I'm seeing in game is not matching what I'm seeing in the settings, which is not matching what the characters are saying. I can't revisit it or if I am revisiting it, um, the camera was not the greatest there. I was looking at a family tree at one point and I wanted the camera to kind of follow up the family tree, you know, to see the names. I'm trying to get as much information as I can. And the camera was just like moving all over. It did not matter where I was having my mouse. The camera was like always just kind of shifting all around. So we didn't even get a good look at the family tree and then when you open up the settings it's this tiny little polaroid picture of the family tree and then it would just say a family tree okay i need to see what it says please i'm trying to put the pieces together in this game and i can't if none of the clues are telling me what it actually is. So that is one aspect that I did not enjoy at all and it was actually a little bit frustrating. So I wasn't feeling very connected to the story as much as I have been in games past because I just, the game itself was glossing over the information, which is a little frustrating for me. Another thing that is it's part graphics, part mechanics, so I'm kind of throwing it in this section, is if you're familiar with these games, again, you are given choices. You're, giving, you're given a lot of different ways to make choices. You have the quick time events, you have dialogue choices where a person will be in a conversation and then it will pop up with two options on the bottom, both very vague and then it kind of steers the conversation. There's also choices that you can make. Some of them time out, some of them don't, and it's more interactions. Should I open the store? Should I go left or right? Should I snoop in this person's bag? Like that sort of thing. The mechanic that I want to talk about now is the dialogue choices because the one thing that we always kind of joke about when it comes to these is that it zooms in very close on the character's face, but I feel like in the quarry specifically, the developers knew exactly what they were doing and they were just memeing so hardcore. There is no way that this was not set up intentionally. We were laughing so hard at some of the faces that the characters were making and it would literally be in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> I can't do this the whole game. Oh my god. What's happening? <laughs> Why? <laughs> cool story, bro. Mm. Oh! <laughs> oh no! And it's supposed to be like this intense game, and instead it was just so ridiculous that you could not help but laugh. Basically, I got a lot of amazing screenshots from this game. My desktop is pretty much all screenshots from the quarry because I just could not help myself. It was so funny, and it should not have been that funny, but I feel like the developers definitely knew what they were doing. I keep referencing the older Supermassive games, but I think that it's important to kind of compare and contrast um, similar games. So in the past, tutorials were kind of woven directly into the story, whereas in the quarry, you got these campy, for lack of a better way of describing, little short videos that were so 
you find yourself at camp and it was this cartoon commercial like a, a little commercial on what to do and what not to do it was super cute a lot of people in chat were saying that it was very similar to commercials in wandavision if you're familiar with that i have not watched wandavision so i had no clue what it was referencing but i thought that it was adorable we got it a ton in the first save file that i started unfortunately that one we were getting so much lag that the game was pretty much unplayable so i had to start other save files and when i did that at some point we realized that we were not getting any of those videos anymore and i thought that it was the strangest thing so i don't know if it's tied to just the first time you are experiencing it in the game but i wish that it would have been in every save file even though of course like we know how to play it, I guess, because we've had save files in the past. But they were so cute and adorable and so unique. I loved them a lot. And the last mechanic that is kind of unique to the quarry but was still present in the older games was don't breathe mechanics and in until dawn you had don't move where you had to keep the controller very still and the dark pictures anthology they have like a heartbeat mechanic that is kind of don't move and you have to time buttons in time with like a heartbeat which is kind of cool and then the quarry has don't breathe where it will prompt you on screen and then you have to press and hold a button and on the sides of the screen it starts kind of counting down so once you get all the way to the bottom you move it seems like you move regardless of if you release the button or not i couldn't really figure that out because most of the time i didn't let the timer run out all the way and as you are holding your breath you can see an alert of whatever threat is around you kind of moving with a red light it's kind of like a proximity light so when the light gets dimmer the threat is further away so you can kind of judge when you want to move if it's a good time to move and you have to be careful like you don't want to move too soon you don't want to wait too long i really enjoyed that more than the other don't move mechanics from the older games but i don't think that i ever fully figured them out moving on to my spoiler free thoughts on the story for the quarry. Overall, I will say that unfortunately, I was pretty disappointed by the story. Of course, I played it from start to finish, so even though I wasn't loving it, I still stuck it out. I think my biggest disappointment was that about an hour into the game, not even, it was pretty much in the opening sequence. We clocked what the monster was going to be. When I was going back and looking at my VOD, someone in chat clocked what the kind of subplot was going to be as well. And we were not even out of the opening sequence. So that was very surprising to me because especially in Until Dawn, one of my favorite things to do is play Until Dawn with people who haven't experienced it before because 100% most of the people who have not experienced it will not be able to guess the twist or the story as it comes together. I love when pieces of puzzles fit together all of a sudden and you're gathering all this evidence and then all of a sudden things make sense. So the whole time... I found myself saying, there's no way that it can just be this. There's no way. So my biggest takeaway is if you think that you have it figured out in the opening scene, you probably have the whole game figured out in the opening scene. I guess do with that what you will. It does not get much deeper than the theory that you have. We were coming up with loads of different theories through the en entirety of the gameplay and not a single one played out. And the theories that we were coming up with were a lot more complex than what the story ended up being. So that was incredibly disappointing for me being such a huge fan of these games. I, I feel like it must have gotten nerfed 
along the way. And even though there are serious content warnings for intense body horror and gore and violence, I don't think that it was quite as bad as I thought that it was going to be. And I don't know if that says more about me than anything else, but I was definitely left wanting more and not in a good way. I love these games so much. I love this development team. I will continue to buy literally anything that they put out, but in the grand scheme of things, the quarry I thought at the beginning that it was going to bump Until Dawn out of my number one spot. That is where the game was leading up. By the time we got to the end, we all were kind of just like, well, I guess it's over. I don't know. I don't know. So um, the ending, even though it was one of the better endings, it was incredibly unsatisfying. And I just feel like the story was not as fleshed out as it could have been. So that was that was a pretty big letdown for me, I'm not gonna lie. I have a lot of thoughts about the story of the game and I don't want to get too much into it. Like I said, I want to keep this as spoiler free as possible. If you do want to hear more of my in-depth spoiler thoughts on this game, let me know down below in the comments and I will make I will make that video because I have so many thoughts to discuss and I don't know. I was just, I was very let down by the story in this game, which is frustrating because I, I love these games with my whole heart. I just love them with my whole heart. It kind of just felt like there were a lot of half started ideas that ended up getting tossed to the side and every time something new popped up we were like oh what is this gonna be this has to be xyz this has to go with this maybe it goes with this and we were popping off with all of these different theories and ideas and then none of them played out a lot of the things that popped up were a very one and done type thing you find a piece of equipment that's it you find a letter okay, you find this other weird trunk full of things, that's it. Like, nothing really came together beside the main plot, and even that was pretty weak. It's pretty weak if the game is basically shoving the monster and what the game is going to be about down your throat in the opening sequence, when in all of the other games there have been major twists and turns in the third act as everything kind of ties all together and that just that just did not happen it was almost like the game was almost going there and then would pull back and then it would almost go in another direction and then no so it was really it was really dissatisfying so my overall thoughts on the quarry is that i think I think if you are new-ish to horror and you've never experienced any of the other super massive games, the quarry might actually be a really good place to start just because of the story and it not being as complex and fleshed out as any of the other super massive games in my opinion. If you start with the quarry and then you play some of the other ones, it only goes up from the quarry, I guarantee you. This game is great if you're new to horror and you want something that is more immersive like I said, it has that kind of butterfly effect style of gameplay, which really makes you feel connected to what is happening in the story and immerses you in what is happening in the story, as long as you don't pause too frequently to laugh at the faces that the characters are making. And as we talked about, not only does this butterfly effect style increase the playability, but it helps with immersing you in the story as well. As you work to complete the game in a variety of different ways to get all of the clues, all the different outcomes, and kind of see the fate, every possible fate of all of the characters play out. That is the one thing that will keep bringing me back to super massive games. Even if the quarry wasn't my number one choice, am I going to replay the game? Yeah. Is it because I loved the game and want to experience the story again? No. Is it because I want to see what happens when I make this choice over that choice? 100%. What happens when I 
See, this tarot card instead of another one. What happens if I go left instead of right? Those are the reasons that keep bringing me back to the Supermassive games because for these style of games, I will always want to be a, a completionist with them because I want to get all the clues. I want to experience all the different outcomes and I want to see the game as a whole every way that it has been intended to be played. There were definitely some fun moments. There were some really intense fun parts to play. I enjoyed the dialogue in this game a lot more than in games past. It didn't seem as cringy. The graphics were absolutely stunning, but overall it just goes back to the story and the story was not my favorite. And like I said before, if you are new to super massive games, I feel like the quarry might be a good place to start to kind of dip your toes into the style of gameplay. But if you are familiar with the other super massive games and you are trying to decide whether or not to get the quarry, I would say maybe wait until it goes on sale and then get it on PS4. So those are all of my thoughts on The Quarry. If you've played this game, let me know down below in the comments who survived, who didn't make it, and what you thought of this game. If you've played any of the other Supermassive games until dawn, the Dark Pictures Anthology, let me know which one is your favorite in the comment section below. If you like this video, make sure to give it a big thumbs up, hit that subscribe button for more videos. That's all I got for you today, and I will see you next time. Bye!